Hey guys, uh, it's me again. Um, we're on shelf number one, two, three, four, five. So uh, we're gonna go through the G, finish up the G's and H's today. Um, let's just get started. So first is Good Morning Vietnam. Uh, one of my favorite Robin Williams performances. Uh, just a great, um, just a great comedy. Can't believe this is 25 years old, but that's amazing. I haven't seen this in a while. I haven't put in the Blu-ray yet, so I can't tell you too much about the picture quality or the special features. But um, just a just a great movie overall. Uh, another movie featuring Robin Williams that, in my opinion, is another one of his greatest performances. He actually won the award for uh, best supporting actor for it's uh, Good Morning, Good Morning, Goodwill Hunting. Uh, just a feel good movie about a guy who doesn't really want to accept uh, you know his genius. That's how I feel sometimes. I just don't want to accept my genius. <laughs> that's just stupid as the stupidest line ever. Anyway, next is Get Off My Lawn. Grand Torino. Uh, Clint Eastwood in his 80s just beating the shit out of people. Uh, basically, he uh, is an aging uh, war vet who uh, is pretty racist. Um, and then these Hmong, Hmong immigrants, if I'm pronouncing that right, I'm not racist, I just can't read. Either way, they move in next door, and he grows this friendship with the younger son and daughter of the cup of the family. And um, you know, it, it's it's a great great character piece. Uh, Clint Eastwood is a great writer, uh, director, and actor, but he's not a good singer. Please don't sing anymore, Clint Eastwood, because the song at the end it's sad in all the wrong reasons. But you're a good man, and I enjoy your work. But please stop singing. Next up, it's Green Hornet. Um, I'd heard some mixed things about this, and I'm just a huge fan of, uh, Seth Rogen, so I figured I'd check it out. I mean, it's an, it's an alright movie. It's got, uh, some pretty cool visuals here and there. It was directed by Michael Gondry, which is weird, because he's the guy who did, like, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind in these, like, small, independent movies. But, I mean, it, it's got a pretty decent cast, uh, like I said, some pretty cool visuals here and there. But, I mean, ultimately, it's kind of forgettable, but it's, it's alright. Uh, one of my favorite movies of whatever year this came out. Was it 07? I think it's 07. If it's not 07, yeah, 2007. Saw this in theaters, and if you missed it in theaters, I, I apologize because it truly is a theater experience rather than a movie. It's Grindhouse. This is the, the one with, like, both movies put together with all the fake trailers and stuff because they had originally released it earlier, um, both titles separately. But the thing that sucks about this version of it uh, I love the fact that it's got all the, the stuff that you saw in theaters and a shit ton of special features. It's a great package. But the thing that kind of sucks is when they re when they released them initially, they were the uncut or just director's cut. So they were longer. Each of them had some extra scenes in here and there. And I like that. I wish they would have included those two features on here. Um, but they don't. It's just a theatrical version, which, I mean, I'd rather have that than the other. So I love the, the fact that they have all these fake trailers. Um, from people directed by, like, Rob Zombie and Eli Roth, Edgar Wright. This, I mean, and, um, this movie, it's just a great throwback to those exploitation horror movies. If you're a horror movie fan, you'll dig this. It's, it's something, something very retro, and if you like anything by Tarantino or Robert Rodriguez, you'll enjoy that. Uh, next one I'm a little embarrassed to have in my collection. It's Grown Ups. Um, I don't... Uh, to be honest, I was just kind of excited about the whole fact that they were all getting together, you know, Sandler and Spade and Schneider and Chris Rock, and it's just like, I I, I mean, this was originally conceived way back when uh, Chris Farley was supposed to take the place of Kevin James, but after he passed away, they kind of shelved it, and it's literally them just talking. It's like an SNL skit, or not even like that. It's pretty much like watching a DVD commentary just as a feature-length movie. They're just sitting around chilling, which I mean, they have some funny banter here and there. Uh, I mean, ultimately, it's forgettable. Like, the whole, the climax of the movie takes place, them going to a water park is the climax of the movie. Nothing really happens there. That's just the climax of the movie. There's really not much to it. But, I mean, it's, it gets you in the mood for summer. It's one of those summertime movies that I kind of like. And, I mean, it's, whatever, take it or leave it. A, a movie that I will not, I will take, I will not leave. It's Halloween, the original by John Carpenter. What the hell? Okay, there we go. Um, one of the best horror films of all time, the movie that really introduced me to horror 
at its most basic level because this i mean there's no there's no blood i mean this is just straight suspense movie john carpenter is the master at this type of stuff well he was um i mean this is just a great film the, the really sucky thing about having the blu-ray i kind of wish i had just kept onto the, the the dvd as well as one of those trade and save type things the transfer with this the picture quality is almost too good in the sense that you start noticing things that you didn't necessarily notice before. Um, like, this really have like, it's an or a very orangey fall time feel when you watch it originally, but then on the DVD and stuff, but then when you see the Blu-ray, you kind of notice that it was filmed during the summer because the film actually was filmed during the summer um, and they, they because they couldn't, due to scheduling conflicts, they couldn't film during the fall. And you just kind of pick up on that stuff so it doesn't feel as fallish or Halloweenish as it originally did. But that, I mean, that's a minor complaint. This movie's just an awesome film. Highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. Um, these ones are kind of take it or leave it again. This is, but I, I enjoy them. A lot of people don't. A lot of people, because I talked about how these horror remakes bastardize these originals. And these are Rob Zombie's Halloween and Halloween 2. Halloween is pretty much, a, the last half is a faithful representation or reboot of um, John Carpenter's original. That's the last half. The first half is Rob Zombie just kind of filling in what was the backstory or the origins of Michael Myers and how he became so evil. You know, Rob Zombie has, despite what a lot of people may say, has a pretty nice visual style. Um, for anyone who doubts that, watch The Devil's Rejects. It's a hard movie to get through, but it, it's so visually detailed. And the, just the small things he puts here and there, he knows what he's doing. Um... And I like these movies. I did. The second one is batshit crazy. One of the most brutal films I've ever seen. Uh, mainstream brutal films. I mean, no one dies after like two stabs. People get stabbed 17, 18 times again and again and again. It's so... He stomps a guy's face in. It's just... The shit that goes down is just mind-numbing. And I, I mean, it gets a little pretentious with the whole white horse and the flashback memories and a lot of people just disliked it because they felt like they ruined the character they you know i mean he half the time doesn't wear his mask he's got a big fucking hippie neanderthal beard and he speaks at the end and i mean it's just he went a different way with it and i respect him for doing it um because i feel like it's such a different movie that it doesn't hurt the original or the you know this fucking 10 sequels that followed or whatever um but I like the franchise. I mean, some of them are just big dumb. I mean, some of them are just fun. You know, they're they're not necessarily scary. But yeah, other than the original, they're not really scary. But they're they're, they're they get me into that fallish Halloween spirit. And I like that about them. So I mean, give them a chance. I mean, I understand if you hate them. I know why you do. I just, in my personal opinion, I enjoyed them. A movie that was mediocre. Uh, I like Jason Sudeikis and Owen Wilson. It's Hall Pass. Um, by the Fairley Brothers, they try it. They keep trying. They can't capture the success that they once had. Uh, I heard they're making a Dumb and Dumber too. I pray that that's good. I pray when they, the original cast is back, and the Fairley Brothers are back doing it. I just hope that they can. I mean, they haven't been funny since like me, myself, and Irene. This movie, I mean, it wasn't bad. Um, basically, like uh, just the concept of you know getting a hall pass from your wife and living a week with you know no consequence of what you do, pretty much. Um, I mean, it's kind of formulaic and predictable, but it, there's a couple funny one-liners, and they have some pretty good chemistry, Owen Wilson and Sudeikis. It's just, it's a pretty decent movie. But either way, a movie that a lot of people didn't like, and I I wasn't entirely sure why. I like Will Smith and just about anything. It's Hancock. I thought the effects were pretty good. The effects, the special effects kind of reminded me of what they should have done with Superman Returns, where it just kind of went all out. But um, this movie... I mean, I understand it gets kind of silly and, and but dark at the end, and it's it's got a weird tone here and there. But I, I enjoyed the concept of having a superhero who had consequences, you know what I mean? Um, which I felt I always went unnoticed in all those big summer blockbusters. But I like the cast, Jason Bateman. Like I said, I love it anything. Uh, Will Smith, Charlie Stern. It's a decent movie. I enjoy it. Big summer blockbuster. We talked about Todd Phillips before. Uh, it's The Hangover. And The Hangover Part 2. Um, you know, The Hangover is... I saw The Hangover... Funny story. Well, I saw The Hangover the opening night. I graduated, and the night, the next night it opened. And, I mean, the reviews were in, and they were good, but, like, no one knew what it was going to be. You know what I mean? We just thought it was going to be this movie that made, like, 30, 40 million in the summer and then just kind of died. You know what I mean? But it wound up being this huge hit. And But, like, I mean, that's one of the funnest 
theater experiences I've ever had because people honestly didn't know that they were going to be in for one of the funniest movies of the year. And uh, it was just it was so fun. The, the audience was roaring with laughter. It was a fun time. And that's what I... I mean, it was before it built itself up with so much hype than a, a lot of other people saw and thought it didn't match, uh, match that hype. But I liked it the first time I saw it. And I still like it. It's a funny movie. The cast is great. I mean, especially when they were like unknowns. Now they're all superstars. But it's like... It's a funny movie. The sequel's literally just the exact same movie in a different location with more dicks. <laughs> um, uh, it's, but I mean, the bottom line comes down to it is it, it's funny. It's lazy, yeah, they could have got done so much more with it, but it's, I laughed. I did laugh. And the cast still has a bunch of chemistry together. Um, one of my favorite comedies of the past ten years is Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle. Um, that movie was just so unexpected, like, made like 14, 15 million at the box office and then went on to be this big cult hit because all these stoners didn't want to go to the movie theaters to see it. They just wanted to see it at home and then it became this big thing. So then they made the sequel, Harold and Kumar Escape from Guantanamo Bay, which is not as funny, but Rob Corddry's in it and Rob Corddry, I could watch read a phone book. He is a hilarious. And then they just recently did uh, Harold and Kumar Christmas, which was another movie you should have seen in theaters because the 3D was so inventive and, and actually made use of the 3D. I hate movies that are post-converted, but um, yeah, they're they're all funny movies. I really enjoy all three of them. Uh, John Cho and Cal Penn. It's just cool to see those movies, who, those guys who had like supporting roles in these big comedy franchises like American Pie, and you know Cal Penn was in Van Wilder. It's just to see them. It was cool to see them have their own movie and shine, and they had a great chemistry, and I really, really like them. I'll watch them in just about anything. So, Harold and Kumar, fun, uh, just bizarre movie. Don't take it. Literally, you know what I mean. It's it's one of those movies that you have to leave your, you know, your good sense and uh, and intelligence at the door. But if you're willing to just sit back and watch the zaniness and crazy shit that happens, it's funny. A movie I haven't seen yet. Uh, it's The Help. Daniel got this. Um, I've heard good things. It was nominated for Best Picture. Uh, I've heard it was overly sentimental, but I mean that's not necessarily a bad thing sometimes. But either way, I gotta check it out. I've heard good things. The help. Um, one of my favorite horror remakes ever, actually, it's The Hills Have Eyes. Uh, the sequel to this was a piece of shit, but uh, this one was very tense, very suspenseful, and I think it's a reputation of being a lot gorier or um, bloodier than it actually is, because if you think about it, those who have seen the movie know that everyone who pretty much dies, dies within a span of, t like, in one scene, and then it's the rest of the movie is them getting their revenge on those who, you know, attack the family. But, um, just a, a really suspenseful, well-made movie. It was done by Alexandra Aja, who did, uh, before this, he did High Tension, and after this he did Mirrors, which was, eh. But then he did Piranha 3D, which I loved. Um, but yeah, this one, I mean, it is hard to watch it sometimes because the performances are so realistic, I, I mean... It's not just a bunch of people being dumb in a horror movie, you know what I mean? And the cool thing is, is the geeky guy gets to be like the fucking hero at the end, and that's always cool. So, um, uh, the next one is, uh, this was one of the first Blu-rays I ever bought, just because I didn't own the DVD. I hadn't seen it in a while, I picked it up. It was Hollow Man. Hollow Man was directed by Paul Verhoeven, um, who, who was the guy who did Showgirls and Basic Instinct. He's basically a rapist with a camera, um... <laughs> The guy in this movie, well, Kevin Bacon becomes, they, they developed the technology to make him invisible. And the first thing he does is try to rape somebody. Like, that's, the, the movie doesn't really explore alternate, you know, like, what, could, what would you do if you were invisible? And immediately this guy's going to be like, I'm going to go rape some people. It's like, that's, that's the mindset of Paul Verhoeven. And then it turns into a, like a suspense horror film at the end, and I kind of like that about it. Um, but the visual effects in this are spectacular, especially when it was released. I mean, it was released in, what, 99, 2000? Something like that. 2000. Um, and I like Elizabeth Shue in anything, and Kevin Bacon's always good, but it's a weird movie. Uh, like I, I mentioned this before in my, uh, talking about Bridesmaids, that I thought Horrible Bosses was the funniest film of 2011, and I stand by it. It's got the best cast. I love Charlie Day. Um, I love Jason Stakis. I mean, literally, my three favorite TV actors of right now, of comedy anyway, um, and I mean Kevin uh, Kevin Spacey's hilarious. Colin Farrell, who's in the movie Too Few, he, I wish he had more screen time. And Jennifer Aniston is just gorgeous and funny, proves that she can still do comedy. And Jamie Foxx in his supporting role as Motherfucker Jones, 
is hilarious too. This movie was just, it's one of those concepts that you really wouldn't picture a big studio doing, you know, guys who are going to kill their boss. And it kind of wimps out at the end. But it's it's so well written, and these guys have such chemistry that half the time you think it probably wasn't even written. It's just them riffing on the set. But it was such it was so funny, and it's got a great like soundtrack, and it just feels like one of those big, um, big fun movies. I liked it. I laughed my ass off. Um, then it's Hostel and Hostel Part Two. Uh, I hadn't seen these in a while. I saw them for really cheap at Bull Moose, so I picked them up. Uh, you know, Eli Roth, for all those haters out there, he the guy can direct. I mean, he's really got a sense of visual style. When you see all those shots in those, the openings of all those movies with the, you know, all the dollying, tracking shots across all the insidious equipment and stuff. I, I mean, I think he does have a visual flair. The movies are pretty hollow, and, uh, I mean, there's not a lot of substance. It's really the torture porn. Just watch how we can make you squirm. And it's like, literally as the years go by, it's like, those films become more tame, you know what I mean? They're still, I mean, they were infamous when they were released like five years ago, and now it's like, all the new shit that's coming out, Human Centipede and a Serbian film and all that stuff, it just makes that look like nothing anyway. So it's, I, I can't imagine what it's going to be like down the road, what, how low our um, moral spine of America will go. But I, I mean, whatever, it's... They're, they're not fun. It's literally for people to just watch how gory... how The gore effects. That's what I watch them for. Um, there's not a lot of a suspense or acting. It's literally for the gore effects. And there's a lot of breasts. Exposed breasts. Well, I mean, whatever. Uh, this movie... Uh, just hearing the name of it makes, my, makes me laugh. It's Hot Tub Time Machine. This was... Um, in my opinion, I laughed harder in this than I did The Hangover, actually. It's, like I said, Rob Corddry can do anything, and I'll laugh my ass off. Uh, John Cusack, Clark Duke, and Craig Robinson also playing it. It's it's so stupid, but it, the best part about it is that it knows how dumb it is and just completely goes over the top and runs with the premise. And it's, I'd laugh my ass off. It's so funny, so very stupid. But um, just a great, I mean, I wasn't born during the 80s or anything, but it's just a great movie that you can watch and just kind of get a feel for what it was like during that time. Um, it's funny. This I picked up the other day. Uh, it was really cheap. I really like this movie, actually. And I like kids' movies every once in a while. Some of them get it right. And, uh, this was one of them. It was How to Train Your Dragon. It has a great voice cast. It was... I wish they would say that on the back. I know Jay Barrichell, Kristen Wiig. I think Jonah Hell's in there sometime. Oh, and Gerard Butler did great as the dad in this, too. It's just a sweet... It's a sweet kids' movie. The animation's beautiful. Um... I really enjoyed this, though. I really did. And the last uh, one on this one, shelf number five, is Hugo, Martin Scorsese's uh, kid movie. And when you say Martin Scorsese, the last thing you think of is, I'm going to watch this with my kids. But this is a, a really sweet movie. Um, visually, it's absolutely stunning. It won a bunch of Academy Awards this year, and deservedly so. I mean, and Sacha Baron Cohen, the other thing, yeah, you say Martin Scorsese, Borat, in a movie, let's show it to our kids. I would be like, I would be like, no, <laughs> so stupid. But either way, uh, Martin Scorsese he can direct the hell out of any movie he does, and this is no exception. Uh, a great cast, a great, just a great story about a kid. And the kid, the best thing about this is the kid can act. I hate movies where you know they center it around a child and the child can't act worth a shit and so you lose your dramatic center but this movie really had a, a good lead and i bought every minute of it so that's shelf five guys i'll be back with shelf six have a good one